The morning of August 23, 2011 broke clear and bright. Visitors were enjoying the cathedral and its gardens. Staff were preparing for services and events marking the 10th anniversary of the September 11th terrorist attacks. Unexpectedly, at 1.51 p.m., a magnitude 5.8 earthquake struck the East Coast, centered in rural Virginia, and shaking the cathedral. Everyone turned to look at the top of the cathedral's central tower, where a couple of pinnacles appeared to be leaning. Some heard bells in the carillon ring as the seismic jolt snapped airplane cable that connect the bells to the carillon's keyboard. But the central tower, when you're up there uh, looking at it up close, uh, there is just a tremendous amount of damage to the four pinnacles. The southwest pinnacle lost about the, uh, the top third of it, and that piece is actually laying on the roof. It's a huge piece. It's four stones, and all together they probably weigh, I would say, a ton and a half. I can see cracking uh, all along uh, the top end of that arch, and I see some on this lower flying buttress. As afternoon turned to evening, reports from the cathedral's masons and from engineers familiar with the cathedral began to paint a picture of damage that far exceeded the initial observations. All four grand pinnacles of the Gloria in Excelsis Tower had rotated and lost integrity. Finials, angels, and other pieces of limestone filled the gutters and littered the ground hundreds of feet below. The flying buttresses in the apse, while still in compression, had suffered cracks. The lead roof had been punctured in several places by falling stones, and a gargoyle's head hung precariously on a lead pipe. We immediately went into action uh, to try and assess the level of damages and to stabilize those damages. What I can tell you at this point, the good news is that the uh, engineers tell us that they believe the cathedral building is structurally sound. The next days were filled with intense review and cataloging of damage. Plans were formulated to accommodate the September 11th weekend safely amid the newly arriving fencing and initial stabilization efforts. Alas, during a violent thunderstorm, the largest crane in the United States at the time, which was helping with the stabilization, fell over, closing South Road for months and forcing the relocation not only of the 9-11 events, but worship services for eight weeks. Several plantings in the bishop's garden were crushed, and the wall around the garden was broken, especially the Norman Arch entrance. The cathedral would not reopen until the weekend of November 12 and the consecration of the ninth bishop of Washington. After a three-month exodus, it was with great joy to see this cathedral open and alive again with worshipers and visitors alike. To see the cathedral filled with people and spirit and adornment seemed the perfect reopening. And since that time, we, of course, welcome worshipers and visitors daily, not only to explore this great space, but to explore their faith. The following weeks saw the erection of an enormous platform and scaffolding atop the central tower, particularly around the four grand pinnacles. Using two smaller cranes, loose stones were removed, damaged pinnacles disassembled and lowered for safekeeping, and yet other masonry cabled together and supported for future effort. A difficult access team repelled down the west facade and down the central tower to check for damage. A team of engineers scoured lower portions of the nave ceiling for damage, while netting was installed under the higher portions to collect any loosened mortar that might fall. Dan Lemieux from Wiss Janney Elster Associates, who also inspected the Washington Monument, describes what the team found. So I think it's a little more, uh, when you compare it to something like the monument, uh, there are more surprises out here. And certainly when you talk to some of the team members as they scale some of the pinnacles, uh, they're discovering pieces that are quite unstable at a height of 200, 300 feet. After reopening in the fall, the stabilization efforts continued. As the weather turned to winter, stone carvers Andy Yule and Sean Callahan began to clean and repair salvageable stonework and to carve replacements for stones beyond repair. Now we took an intact original of the same, this is from the uh, other tower on the west side. So I use this as a guide and I'm using that to transfer to this one we're now reproducing. 
February 2012 marked the six-month anniversary of the earthquake, and the cathedral thanked friends and supporters for success in raising $2 million for the initial stabilization and repair work. As spring blossomed, two giant trees in the bishop's garden were replaced with impressive specimens by All Hallows Guild. The damage to South Road was repaired, and recently work on the wall around the bishop's garden has begun. The fences have been moved back closer to the building, and the braces or hat on the central tower have become part of the DC skyline. We're pleased that we've been able to carry out our mission as the spiritual home of the nation during this trying and difficult time. Thousands of tourists and pilgrims continue to come to the cathedral. Our worship services are well attended, educational programs and musical concerts, significant interfaith initiatives have been carried out. We've also been able to provide memorial services for Charles Colson, columnist William Raspberry, and for the Memorial for the AIDS Quilt Project. While the engineers and staff finalize plans for restoration, including prioritization of the work, Sean and Andy, along with Joe Alonzo, have repaired or carved anew all the pieces to complete the Northwest Tower's restoration. Repairs have also just begun on the central tower, which will imminently permit the reinstallation of the solitary loose stone left atop the tower. This whole area here was all busted up and broken. The edge was split. And what I want to do is reproduce this area here over where the damage was. The remaining stones, which have been recarved with Dutchman repairs, will wait for the day that a crane again graces the cathedral grounds as it did for decades during construction. As the one-year anniversary of the earthquake approached, the cathedral chapter announced the selection of the Reverend Canon Gary Hall to become the 10th Dean of Washington National Cathedral. Gary assumes leadership of the cathedral at an exciting time and will be charged with leading the significant fundraising effort to restore and preserve the cathedral for future generations. It's been a challenging year and a very moving year for us, and we want to thank you all for your support and prayers over this past year. I want you all to know that we will be faithful to the builders and artists who came before us as we begin our work and to everyone who's contributed to the construction and reconstruction of our cathedral. We have a long road ahead of us, five years, $20 million, but we are committed to restoring the spiritual home to the nation, and we hope that you will stay with us on this journey. Thank you.